I'm Michael Burton, assistant professor at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and I'm still learning all kinds of new stuff in Blender. I thought I knew a lot, and I just learned a new trick um, using displacement maps from Quixel Bridge content. So here you can see this roof. Um, I'm modeling this building uh, in Washington, D.C., and I wanted a slate roof that had some texture to it. Um, this is by no means perfect, and I've learned a lot of this from Ryan King Art, but uh, thanks, Ryan, for all of your help. Um, these are things that will help you, hopefully. So to start with, uh, you want to have, and everyone starts with this one, Node Wrangler turned on. Okay, so type in Node, click it, and it's native in there, and that will just help speed things up. Go over to your render engine and make sure it's not on Eevee, because you can see what Eevee does. Nothing. And uh, that one's an easy one. So go to Cycles. Then in your material, and this is on a material basis, you have to go to um, the displacement setting. And sorry, I take that back. Go to Settings and make sure displacement and bump are turned on. If you go bump only, nothing happens. So displacement and bump are on, and you'll get this. Okay, so now um, when you're in Bridge, you've downloaded something straight into Blender using the plugin. I'll be honest, I don't remember the plugin or how I get this set up, but I did, and there's lots of videos on it. But I downloaded it and I exported it, and now I'm going to click these three little dots and go to Files, and that's because the displacement um, layer is just, or image, is not brought into Blender. So here's what it looks like when you bring it into Blender. i move that one out of the way, and I go to the Shading Editor. Um, it will not have, on most of them, um, the displacement turned on. Let me move this over so you can see this in real time. So um, I was over here cranking up normals because I'm like, okay, that's really going to help for what I do with my animations for this stuff to show up, but it looks a little bit uh, flat. So, you know, you can keep that normal map turned on. It cranks up the darks. And then you're going to want to drag in the displacement map. So drop the displacement map over here. And let me zoom in a little more. Um, okay, so a couple things you're going to need to do is plug it into the displacement. Shift A for Node Wrangler and open displacement. And you're gonna drop a displacement node there. Then you will take that displacement node and bring it into your material output. And then something insane like that will happen, which is okay. Let's bring the color over to the height. So let me show that a little more closely. Color of the displacement to the height. And um, for this one, I'm going to drop the mid-level to zero, and it starts to look a little bit better, and you can change the scale, and that will start to make it go bigger or smaller. Um, but you're like, what's going on here? It looks crazy, and that's because uh, the displacement is not at the same scale as the color map, or the normal map, or the roughness map, and so whenever you bring in a material from... Um, bridge, you're going to want to re-plug in the vector to all of these. So that's starting to look a little bit better. And by the way, if texture coordinate and mapping are not already uh, part of your setup, when you bring over the material, uh, you can always shift A, search, and add them. So I'm not going to add them right now. Um, with that said, you're going to want to have vector plugged into each of the vector settings here for your normal map, your displacement map, your roughness, your image, your color image, and all that. And um, I also have mine rotated one way or the other. Okay, so that's looking a little bit better. And um, I think I'm going to set my scale to 0.9. I wanted it a little bit smaller to begin with. Okay, and now... Uh, we can drop the scale on the texture map quite a bit. Um, this one, I just needed it at like 0.2. Um, I just wanted a little bit of, a, of, a, of an edge there, maybe 0.3. So it really depends on the scale of your model. But the last thing, um, none of this is going to happen if you don't have geometry set up on here. So 
here's um, one of these and I will go over to edit mode and let me put it here so you can see I got lots of geometry on that one come back go to this one over here that I've made that has a tab over to edit mode there's literally just five faces right one two three four five so uh, in edit mode when you make something you're going to add geometry by grabbing the plane selection or the face selection hit a that will select all of them right click subdivide and it will bring up this little subdivide contextualization menu and you can crank it up um, I'm going to go to like 15 or maybe even 25 uh, you know you need a lot and now when I drop my material onto this one, you can see here, I'm going to go back to object mode. I'm going to select the material that's a slate roof that I just created. It will have geometry. So it will actually have some displacement. And uh, that's a simple way that I've learned to set up the displacement map using Quixel Bridge content. I hope it's helpful.